Law Warrior Armour, Hawkmoth Gunship. Overview. In 3058, Michelson Heavy Industries unveiled a revolutionary new type of VTOL, the Yellow Jacket Gunship. Throwing aside conventional wisdom, which dictated that these VTOLs should mount numerous small caliber weapons, the Yellow Jacket mounted a single weapon, a massive Gauss rifle. The logic behind the vehicle was that the incredible firepower and long range of the rifle, combined with the natural agility of a VTOL, could combine to produce a deadly firing platform. The Yellow Jacket's spectacular successes against Clan Smoke Jaguar during Operation Bulldog validated the design and made it one of the most sought-after VTOLs on the field today. With such success supporting their efforts, it was only natural that the design team at Michelson Heavy Industries would take the opportunity to experiment with the new light Gauss rifle produced by Imperator Automatic Weaponry of Atreus in the Free Worlds League. Imperator proved quite willing to sell the weapon to Michelson, their only stipulation for the sale being a contract under which Michelson would ship the first Hawk Moths off the production line to the Free Worlds League. Because the new lighter gunship was based on an already proven model, Michelson's team enjoyed the luxury of taking numerous design shortcuts, and so production is already underway. Capabilities Like the Yellow Jacket gunship, the Hawk Moth is built around a single weapon, the new light Gauss rifle. Though the light Gauss offers considerably less firepower than the standard, its increased range makes it one of the farthest firing weapons among both the Innisfere and clans, able to strike at a staggering 750 meters. Additionally, the Light Gauss carries twice as much ammo as the standard rifle for the same weight, an important selling point, especially considering that one of the first Yellow Jacket variants stripped off a ton of armour to add more ammo. The primary design mounts two tons of ammo for the Light Gauss, giving the vehicle unmatched staying power on the field. Another significant feature is the Hawk Moss maximum speed of 130 kph, a significant jump from the much slower 97 of the Yellow Jacket. This additional speed and manoeuvrability proved in field tests to significantly increase the Hawk Moth's survivability. Opponents of the design cite its relative lack of armour as a serious liability, especially when compared to the Yellow Jacket or even the Cavalry Attack Helicopter, both of which can survive a direct hit by a Clan Particle Projection Cannon. Deployment The first production run of the Hawk Moth, per the contract between Imperator and Michelson, was shipped in its entirety to the Free Worlds League, where it has been assigned to several regiments of the Free Worlds Legionnaires. However, much to Michelson's pleasure, every military in the Innisfere has already placed orders for the new design. Variants The only Hawk Moth variant, which is currently being field tested, sheds a ton of ammo and adds armour, increasing its protection by almost 80%. At a mass of 25 tonnes, its movement type is VTOL, its power plant is the Michelson 60 internal combustion, with a cruise speed of 86 and a max speed of 130 kph. Its armour is Star Slab 5 Ferrofibrous, with the single Imperator Light Gauss Rifle. It's manufactured by Michelson Heavy Industries on Rukba. Its communication system is the Garrett Supreme Sound. Targeting and tracking is the Garrett D2J. Overall, this translates into a cruise of 8 and a flank of 12, giving it armour of 9 on the front, 6 on the sides, 4 on the rear, and 2 with the rotors. Its Light Gauss is located in the front of the body, with 32 rounds of ammo. My first exposure to the old Hawk Moth uh, in any game was uh, Living Legends, where it's actually quite an effective little uh, little vehicle to just harass uh, players with. The Light Gauss doesn't do a lot of damage, but you do get a lot of ammo, and it does allow you to uh, just harass at range and just plink away at targets and draw fire. Uh, in tabletop terms, this is obviously something that's also quite good. Light Gauss rifles aren't particularly deadly on their own, but they can start to mount up damage. I think they do... 8 damage, if I remember correctly off the top of my head. So they're doing the equivalent of a large laser for virtually no heat and pretty decent range. And yeah, a group of Hawk Moths can quickly become quite irritating, I imagine, for uh, a lance of players. So yeah, definitely see the value in these. Cost is probably a little bit higher. You're dealing with, obviously, Gauss technology, which is uh, a little bit more expensive to produce compared to standard auto cannons, But... Uh, yeah, Hawk Moths, I imagine, something that you see, again, would probably be quite common past a certain point in certain locations. You could probably imagine these things being used again for um, scouting or harassment or being able to slow up enemy approaches by like armor, uh, co armored columns or battle mechs being able to use these to quickly get into a position, fire off a few rounds, reposition, fire off you know, more rounds from a different angle kind of thing, and just basically just generally trying to break up enemy formations and keeping them 
uh, uh, basically on the back foot while they're trying to encounter them. Of course, the first time a Hawk Moth gets hit, likely it's going to go internal uh, or just outright destroy the vehicle straight away. A side hit from a couple of lasers is definitely going to ruin its day. Uh, a half decent couple of hits on the front is also going to pen. So it's pretty much imperative that the vehicle stays at medium to long range or is using its speed to its fullest. Uh, definitely the kind of thing that I would use a couple of, uh, yeah, definitely in a scenario to uh, go up against the players because it's uh, it's a relatively annoying little weapon, but yeah, it can cause some nasty damage if it's uh, left to its own devices. And uh, something that players can use as well, obviously, it's uh, again, it's an, another unit, a bit like the uh, earlier um, helicopter that was meant, the Mantis, being able to have uh, a couple of them as friendly fire support. Again, not the kind of thing that will you as a GM are rolling for their turn and you're having these things fire at a target that they're going to be killing your, you know, your bad guys that you've generated. So it's not like the NPCs are going to steal all the glory, but it means that they can, again, you can alleviate the pressure off players if they're having a bit of a rough time with the enemies that you've uh, that you've put against them. And it means that uh, the players have something that can do a little bit of support fire or be able to, say, harass um, a fire support unit at the back of the line, that kind of thing. Or if the players are in a much larger scenario where they're, you know, they're bringing in uh, some of their own uh, support options in vehicles like these, Hawk Moss, I think, are a great choice. Um, you know, a lance of these, coordinating all of the light gauss fire can quickly rack up damage, and, yeah, you could uh, tactically use these uh, very skillfully on the field you know, and get the best out of them, I think. Uh, even at the cost of losing a couple, I think overall they could probably do a lot of damage if uh, if you've got the right positioning for them, yeah, before they are either forced to leave the field or you uh, you end up suffering the casualties. But yeah, 25 tons, it's not bad, considering the weapons package that it's carrying. Two of these, say, with uh, a couple of yellow jackets, for instance, and you've got quite a nice mix of standard gauss and light gauss fire as well. It means you've um, you've got quite a good punch for relatively low cost by comparison to battle max and um yeah some pretty decent range and uh, and good firepower yeah he's definitely making some enemies do some pilot rolls uh when those uh, hits start racking up so yeah but that was the that was the hawk moth uh, one that uh, i think many people who played living legends i said will be familiar with and uh, others will sort of remember from uh, when it was first shown here cool looking helicopter uh, the art design for the vehicle is generally pretty good, um, until you get to some of the clan tanks, but we'll get to those in the future. Some of those clan tanks look a bit fucking wacky, but at least I suppose you could say it's distinct, unique artwork for them, maybe? Oh, anyway, have a good week all. Thanks for listening, as always, and have a good week. Bye-bye.